how do we usually react and respond? We try to use our five senses. But then, if you have your own choice, would you like to build your own sixth sense? I'm a very greedy person. I always want to experience more. So I've learned how to build my own sixth sense and extension through putting senses in material and also through experiencing different textile processes. How do we make textile more human? So today, I'm going to share a little secret with you all. How do we do that? But before that, let's think about it. How do we usually react and respond? Do we move or do we make sound? Actually, we don't do that anymore because all we do, we click and like. Why can't we make things a little bit more simple, a bit more playful? Welcome to my textile magic world. This is the latest installation that I've been working on. So, it's a kinetic installation that's sort of made with textiles. The idea is really to interact and get response from the installation itself. You can talk to it, you can sing to it, you can whistle to it, and it'll respond to you in the rhythm of how you create sound. And it will dance back. It will move, it will swirl, it will slide. The idea is really to encourage people to create interactions with the surrounding. You are the determinator of how this installation will work and look. I wish you can also smell through the screen, because I've been working with a chemist to create a scent to lure people in to experience this visual engagement. So this really mellow, sweet scent. People sort of walk into the installation, say, like, mm, this is nice, and they start whistling and singing towards it and forget where they are. Fantastic. So the first scent is called the entice. All of a sudden, a second layer of scent comes through. It's really pungent, and it's like, oh gosh, I'm trapped. And then they're all where they're in a different environment. All the energy's been sucked in by the installation. And then they die. The second, in, the second perfume is called The Kill. Actually, I didn't go crazy, and I didn't make up a scenario. I've been trying to mimic a plant called sundew. So trying to make human beings like flies being trapped in a plant. And the more we struggle, the quicker the plant moves and digests us and into its nutrient, you have power to it. Actually, there's a lot of senses and interactions that happens in nature that we can borrow. So sundew is one of them. It has this movement, interact with the prey, or actually killing the prey, rather. Um, it can also find it in pine cone. It detects the humidity around us. It opens and closes according to its surroundings. The resurrection plant, it dormants, and then it opens up when there's found water source and grow and starts seeding. Five years ago, I started my investigation to look at the behavior of nature and technology, hoping to create a beautiful marriage. How can we create a material that has its own life and not allowing technology to take control over it? So the word naturology came to my mind. How do we push the boundary of textiles than just being clothing or sofa covers? So I began to work with material like shape memory alloys, polymers, and fibers. Artificial material that has a behavior that moves when temperature change. So I started to experiment, weave some of the material into my textiles, temperature change, shape change. All quite fantastic. So this um, material uh, of this yarn has been existed for over like 30 years. Quite clever of us to create this. But if you think human being is quite clever, hold on to your thought. Because 3.8 billion years ago, this already existed in nature. 
Pinecone has the ability of creating this natural movement of opening and closing with its scale without any instruction. So I began, I really want to find out and try to create this magical representation of the change of surroundings in my textiles. By laminating hand-woven textiles and shape memory polymer, with understanding how the grain works with the veneer, enables me to create this natural movement by temperature changes, it sort of creates the movement um, of the breathing textiles as the seasons change. Hang on a minute, did I just say seasonal change? Okay, so you're not gonna really look into my textiles, like, is it changing? I can't really see it, can I? No. So then, I've decided to borrow some of the artificial technology that we developed uh, in the human world. Um, Arduino and also a shape memory alloyed uh, and a proximity sensor. So by inserting um, all these uh, artificial technologies into the textiles, we allow us to measure um, and create a interaction with the art piece quite accurately, but also have this natural rhythm of movement. You don't have to wait for three months to see the movement. You can see the movement instantly. It is measuring um, about the foot traffic in the room, and then it reflects on the art wall. So create a dialogue between the space. So this is naturology. And then in 2012, I moved to Beijing from London. Also fantastic. My view from my apartment, looking at the CCTV tower. Unfortunately, that's no average day. This is my average day view from my apartment. So pollution and um, global warming has become an issue. And constant road work is really due to because an expected 24 hours change of climate within 24 hours. Materials that we generally use are not expected to have this behavior to adapt and adopt but then I thought, why can't we create one like that? To localize to the local climate and how to behave how it should be. So going back to my library of nature, um, then I found the resurrection plant, a type of tumbleweed that you find in desert that rolls along in the wind and it finds its own water source. It looks dead, but it's not. As soon as you put it in, into water source, it starts growing and seeding. And it's an amazing ability how it moves. So I start borrowing the technique from this plant and look into a new way to laminate materials. And here we go, the smart veneer. By understanding how the grain works to create, see how we can create, recreate this movement. How do we understand the nature instead of looking at the numerical values that we see in thermometers, but shapes? How humidity and dryness can represent from 2D shapes and 3D shapes? How temperature can be read from a color? And also light that we can't really get hold of can be seen through shapes and reflectivity. So I particularly love this experimental exercise with this particular material because when you place in different area in the garden, it's receiving different nutrient of its surrounding. So the surrounding be become the determined factors and the designer of the piece instead of myself. As a designer, it's important to think about the application or potential application uh, of the material. So I began to... Um, experiment with a Bhutto dancer, 
looking into how body movement can affect the shape of the piece. So I've draped my dancer in all of the different pro prototypes and see how the body movement can give us a clue what part of sort of body extension we can create as a jewelry. So we have uh, hand extension, because I have a lot of hand gestures, so the way how we move would influence the piece. When we travel to different places, the humidity are different, and also we behave and have a different shoulder movement can also influence the piece. Automatically, our body language becomes the choreographer to the work. It is really important as a designer to also understand how the material is being made, where it's being made, and who made it. Do you know who made your top that you're wearing today, and where is it being made? When I was living in Beijing, I was very fortunate. I was given a chance to research in Guizhou in search of the both Miao and Su ethnic minorities' work. I was invited to the homes to live and to learn about the textiles, the heritage craft. I was so touched and impressed by everyone I met who could share a story behind the textiles and why the stitch are being put on the textiles. And this is when my journey with Guizhou begins. Within my research, I understand that only 10% of the women are inherited with such skills. They have huge competitions in the imitation digital market. People from the market don't understand whether they are being handmade or digitally made. They're really struggling with work. And also, in order to, for them to earn incomes, some of them have to work as laborers in the construction field nearby, and only leaving the elderly behind to create textiles, but no one to inherit the skills to. So as a designer, that I feel it would be a great opportunity for me to look into how to broaden the perspective of these textiles can be used to show the new generations of the ethnic minorities that there are opportunities, the coolness in applications of their textiles. So I've started a scheme unfold, really working with the um, craftsmen hands in hands, and uh, ideas pairing designers and craftsmen together to look in uh, what we can both contribute into the textiles. Maybe using different materials, but applying the same techniques. And most importantly, it's the personal connectivity and respect of the heritage craft. So, I'm proud to present to you my team, the Miss Poon sisters. One is a specialist in weaving, and one a specialist in boutique. Um, the weave specialist actually never left the village before, ever and have never worked with anyone before. So it was so fantastic knowing um, the difficulty to overcome the projects. Uh, and in the middle is her younger sister, which has worked in Sunjin before in a factory that doesn't require her craft skills. So they've been really open-minded and try different various of materials. Um, so this is a copper uh, textiles that's been weaving in the village. Also, different types of batik work, looking into the range of colors and the bigger scales of work. I can, all, I can still smell the indigo dye from the plant that grows in the garden. Well, actually, in the mountain, not the garden. <laughs> um, and also, cold designing together. Uh, one of the most enjoyable parts of my journey is actually having both creativity from both sides of the world joined together. 
So it's not just about designing, designer walking into the village and giving out a designer and said, look, can you just do this? I would like 50 copies of this. But it's also about using the ability and creativity um, to work on design, to show the world what they can do. And so this is a particular, the first piece of textile that we co-designed together. I, I lead the first part, giving out the design, and the second part, I left it on a hand and um, work on a second layers of print. And I'm super proud of our cool design. Chinese culture is generally based, once the village is gone, the culture is gone. While all these villages are disappearing at the rate of high-speed train, I had the privilege to work with some of the most amazing craftsmen. And I would like to invite you to listen to some of the beautiful textiles they've been working on. ตาหินอ้าวหังอ้าเขาเฮกวางตายเออเจนแมยองฟันอ้าวถามพยามหินนี่อ้าหนีเปียงอ้าเปียงจังลาเนี่ยมีอ้าตายยันอ้าปู่